It's at the absolute physical limit of anything no that can be squeezed together without breaking physics. Okay, now hold on there. This breaks physics way worse than black holes. They're going to be looking at another one of Kurtz Gazat's videos. Specifically a Gravistar, or Gravitational Vacuum Star, or a Black Hole's Evil Twin. Those of you who don't know me, I'm Tyler Fulce. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry. From engineering to operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. Let's see. There might be an object so indestructible, extreme, and brutal that it could kill black holes. Gravistars. Cosmic soap bubbles filled with... Ooh, you don't want those to collide. <laughs> ...pure energy and with a shell made of the weirdest material that's possible in nature. What are they? What do they look like? And are they just... Did they mean pure energy literally as in no mass? That doesn't sound right. Just a theoretical fever dream, or will they change our understanding of the universe forever? The birth of the most extreme objects in the universe. <laughs> Very massive stars die in the most dramatic way possible, a supernova. We've explained this process in detail before, but in a nutshell, in less than a second, their cores collapse crushed under their extreme gravity. The star's shell rushes in, bounces against the collapsing core, and explodes, shining brighter than whole galaxies. So yeah, a star is a nuclear fusion reactor. They run out of fuel, but they don't run out of mass, and the pressure, and they're kept in equilibrium by a force balance between their own gravity, as well as the force exerted from nuclear fusion at their core. They run out of fuel. Fusion doesn't maintain the pressure, so gravity pushes down hard. And for sufficiently massive stars, you get this. Depending on how massive the star was, there are two possible outcomes. Either the core compresses into a super-dense neutron star, or it kind of breaks reality and collapses into a singularity, an infinitely dense point with no size or dimensions at all. A place where the laws of the universe stop making sense and time and space are reversed. A black hole. Gravistars are a third, even weirder option. Instead of collapsing into an infinitely dense point, the core is kind of ground down, like a rock pulverized to dust by a cosmic hydraulic press. Atoms and particles are crushed so hard that they transform into pure energy. A sort of mini-universe, if you want. And just huh. like our universe, this bubble violently wants to expand and grow. In a fraction of a second... So, a bubble of exotic matter. So, for this to work, the black... Or not the black hole, but the collapsing star would need to pump the brakes perfectly. Meaning this outward exotic particle pressure has to be just enough to get it to slow down. Not too much to violently eject the matter, but not too little that it collapses into a black hole anyway. The bubble smashes into the collapsing star around it. The unspeakable mass of the star collapsing under its own gravity meets the titanic violence of the expanding energy bubble. Like an ancient god hammering on its anvil, matter Four. is trapped between an immovable object and an unstoppable force, forging a new kind of material that we've never seen before, but that we know is physically possible. And then it suddenly stops. Okay, so no observational evidence, but something that has the potential to exist because we don't have enough evidence to say that it does not exist but at the same time, we don't have any evidence to say that it does exist. This whole situation doesn't seem likely to happen naturally to get a very perfect parking, for lack of a better word, of a collapsing star. Are they gonna say this is done by aliens? Let's see. A Gravistar is born. What does it look like? Cosmic soap bubbles. <laughs> Just like black holes, a Gravistar can have any mass, but a typical one would be about the size of the London metropolitan area and as massive as 10 suns. Okay. The shell of the Gravistar is utterly dark. So comparable-ish to a neutron star based on size and mass, though I guess maybe smaller by a little bit. And the coldest thing in the universe, only a billionth of a degree above absolute zero. If we look at it in deep infrared, even the cosmic microwave background glows bright in comparison. How can anything made of matter be that cold? Don't all atoms jiggle back and forth? <laughs> the thing is, the shell's not made out of atoms. 
It's made from an entirely new, unique and extreme matter that doesn't have a name yet and that's at the very limit of what's physically possible in nature. Actually, the shell is so incredibly thin that atoms seem truly gigantic next to it. And okay. yet, despite being ultra-thin, because it's been forged by two impossibly extreme forces, the shell is incredibly tight. So tight that if you wanted to stretch the whole shell by just one meter, you'd need the energy of an entire supernova. What about the inside? Well, it only gets weirder. The interior of a gravistar is perfectly simple because it's sort of empty, completely empty. A perfect vacuum without a single atom, particle or wave. But despite being as empty as it gets, this vacuum is boiling with the most primitive and fundamental kind of energy in the universe. We yes. need a detour to explain how any of this makes sense. Yeah, because right now you're sounding like you just violated the second law of thermodynamics. How does this not have this? To me, it's a closed system. They make it very clear that it's closed, but you can't have closed and entropy going down, which is what this sounds like thus far. The fundamental nothingness at the core of it all. The inside of a gravistar breaks our brains a bit because it's a sort of super condensed nothingness. What does this even mean? We'll have to simplify and use metaphors to make sense of what <laughs> okay. scientists measure and calculate. According to our current understanding of physics, Particles like quarks, electrons, photons, and so on are not really solid objects, but sort of waves in an ocean. In our human world, you can't have waves without water. Sure. And in the smallest world, you also can't have particle waves without some kind of underlying, omnipresent cosmic fluid. This fluid is the vacuum, what we perceive as nothingness. It's the fundamental ocean at the bottom of reality. The waves of this vacuum ocean are the particles that make up you and everything else. But the other thing is when this collapse, if there's really nothingness, radiation is being released. There's gammas, x-rays, neutrinos. How does this energy dissipate without disrupting this thin yet hard structure? Even when there are no waves or particles traveling through it, the fluid is still there. And like any fluid we know, it has inherent energy. Vacuum fluid is everywhere in the universe. The room you're in is 99.98% vacuum between the air particles bouncing around. Between the trillions of particles making up your cell. Note when they say vacuum, they're not referring to like vacuum pressure, pressure below atmospheric necessarily when they talk about it in the context of your room. At least I don't think your room is. At least hopefully nobody's drawn a vacuum on your room. There's vacuum. But it's different inside a gravistar. When our star collapsed and condensed so violently, it was as if the universe took a cosmic pump and compressed as much vacuum fluid as physics allows into a kind of super dense nothingness. As said before, even without any waves, the nothingness vacuum ocean of the universe has energy. But the super dense vacuum inside a gravistar has almost a billion, trillion, trillion, trillion times more energy per cubic centimeter than the vacuum outside the star. Okay, sure. So it's heavily dense and somehow in magical equilibrium with this shell <laughs> that doesn't have any cracks on it. I'm just thinking, so high energy collisions that say exist in things like the Large Hadron Collider would produce conditions, albeit on a much smaller scale, when these sort of exotic materials would show up, but they haven't. Now, that by itself doesn't, you know, say, no, this thing doesn't exist. But the point is, there's just no empirical evidence and and no empirical evidence plus by a process that is not supported by the standard model of particle physics. I'm just I'm really struggling here. <laughs> this is an unbelievable amount of energy and mass in a tiny space, just like you may have guessed it, black holes. Sure. This intensely compressed vacuum ocean can't be compressed any further. It's at the absolute physical limit of anything no that can be squeezed together without breaking physics, like black holes do. The ocean would love to stop being so tight. Okay, now hold on there. This breaks physics way worse than black holes do. <laughs> 
Black holes don't violate the standard model. Black holes are predicted by general relativity under extreme conditions. Event horizons and singularities are a consequence of that. This, now, the idea of a singularity does push our understanding to the limits. It doesn't involve any weird exotic material that's not included in the standard model. And the stellar remnants exceed what's known as the Tov limit, beyond which nuclear forces cannot resist this gravitational collapse, which is also consistent. It wants to stretch out and flow back into the ocean that surrounds the star, but it's trapped in the safest prison possible. The shell, which itself is right at the edge of the physical limit of any material possible, an eternal stalemate between two limits of the universe. Let's leave <laughs> this world of metaphors and get back to our world that feels more real. Maybe Maybe in their explanation they got caught up too much in the world of creating metaphors that they couldn't see the forest from the trees. Because usually these videos are pretty well researched and explained at a high level, but that, I don't know where they're coming from by saying gravitars are more consistent with, by saying that black holes break physics more than talking about something like gravitars. In our world, gravitars stars are perfectly black, eternal objects with borderline insane amounts of mass. Because they're so cold, dark, and massive, from the outside, gravistars look and behave exactly like black holes. Both sure. massively curve space around them and create all the fun effects we love black holes for, <laughs> from trapping mass and light in accretion disks or slowing down time as you get closer. For details, we've made one or two videos on black holes before. Yeah, I want your stuff on black if you holes. fell into a gravistar, you'd be extremely dead before you even hit the surface, ripped apart and ground down by the gravitational forces. Could say the same thing about a neutron star for that matter, or really any sufficiently large star, though you're gonna get the difference is with a star you're gonna be incinerated first in most cases. But if you're talking about spaghettification, yeah, you can see that on a neutron star. Because again, you're dealing with ten ten plus solar masses concentrated in a really small area. And once your scattered remains touch the shell, the atoms you were once made of would probably break down and dissolve completely, only to be converted into the vacuum energy of the interior, making <laughs> the, the gravistar energy. an infinitesimal bit bigger and an infinitesimal bit more massive. Okay, this was fun and all, but what exactly is the point? Isn't this just another video of wild scientific speculation just for the sake of it? <laughs> the point. Uh, maybe? Black holes were suggested more than a century ago as an abstract solution to equations of gravity. I still find it funny that black holes were first speculated by someone whose name means black shield. So the Gravistar might have something that more resembles a black shield, a black shell. <laughs> For more than 50 years, they were considered mathematically valid, but too absurd to be real. Few believed they actually existed. But scientists kept working on paper Division and looking at weird means. things, and then we saw stars being thrown around by invisible titans. We saw light stretching around invisible gaps in the sky. And as our technology and theories improve... Okay, I think I get what they're getting at. They're saying we have empirical evidence for black holes now, but we don't have any for um, gravistars, but we might. We even sort of took a picture of them. We have evidence for them. Not to mention our standard model could be updated at some point. Could build some more bigger colliders to help find out more. Instead of the large hadron collider, the huge hadron collider or something and they fit our theories. And nowadays, it's kind of common sense to accept them as real. Black holes are extremely elegant and fascinating, but they also created a lot of questions that have traumatized physicists for decades. Singularities literally break our best understanding of physics. They seem to delete information, which shouldn't be possible. Sure, but I still think they're... Cl they're more plausible than Gravistars. <laughs> Gravistars are a relatively new idea without any of those problems. They don't need singularities that break physics or delete information. They do need magical material that requires perfect acceleration, almost suggesting that if they do exist, they were some sort of inside job in a controlled artificial process, because it just seems so unlikely to happen naturally, complete with a phase change not supported by the standard model or understandings of nuclear physics, where we're at now. Also, they would be highly unstable because these really thin shells with any sort of exotic material that behaves like that there would be quantum and thermodynamic instabilities 
Not to mention the whole collapse in the into one of these seem to violate the second law of thermodynamics as well as just simple energy balance from the decay heat generated from something like this as it collapses all that radiation it's going to emit so that's energy balance chaotic collapse to an ordered structure entropy problems yes the singularities push physics but they're in their own isolated environment that doesn't really interact much with the universe directly because it's hidden beyond the event horizon. Whereas Gravistars, this pushing physics to the limit is its entire structure, not just one part of it. So if you're going to Occam's razor this, the black holes are more likely and break physics less. They solve the puzzles of black holes, but they too create new problems, like weird exotic matter for their incredibly cold and tight shell. Super dense, nothing to make a supermassive empty core. But just like black holes, they do work on paper and fit what we see in sure. the sky. Make a lot so of stuff work on are paper. they real? And will we ever know? Actually, there is a way to find out. Black holes have an event horizon, while gravistars have a physical shell made of matter, which means that they behave very differently when they smash into each other. The collision of two objects is massive. Smash them into each other and see what happens. As they are, creates huge amounts of gravitational waves, ripples in space-time that travel at the speed of light. You can think of them as the music of cosmic cataclysms. The collision of two black holes That's should sound like a bass good. drum, a deep thumb that stops quickly. But two gravistars colliding should sound like a gong, leaving subtle echoes behind. Scientists are listening for these echoes in the music of the Space cosmos. Gong. Unfortunately, black holes and gravistars are surrounded by such strong gravity that it swamps most of the music. It's like trying to tell two instruments apart through a thick wall of concrete. You need There's so much cosmic interference from any number of cosmic rays that that's kind of hard. <laughs> very sharp technology for that. While we've made incredible progress in the last few years, we're not quite there yet. So this is where we'll end this story. Gravistars have the potential to answer some of the biggest problems in physics. Or they're just another idea for our discard pile. <laughs> but this is why we do science. To learn that everything is different sure. to the way we thought it is. Until the day we truly understand the nature of reality. I like that he's more distracted by losing his drink. Yeah, I don't know about these. We need more evidence, more research. Thanks so much for the recommendation, and thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.